Our family home, nestled in the quiet suburbs, always held a sense of warmth and familiarity. It was in this cozy living room, adorned with soft lighting and worn-in furniture, that our lives took an unexpected turn. It was a brisk autumn afternoon when a package arrived, addressed to us from a distant relative known for their local magical practices. Inside lay a doll unlike any we had seen before, a relic from another time, its face carved with intricate details that seemed to shift in the flickering light. Look what Uncle Leo sent us, my mother exclaimed, her eyes wide with surprise as she carefully lifted the doll from its wrapping. Its antique form bore delicate embroidery that hinted at forgotten tales, and its eyes, though made of glass, seemed to hold a secretive glint. Dad chuckled, amused by the eccentricity of the gift. Well, it certainly is unique. Must be one of Leo's finds from his travels. We placed the doll on a small table in the corner of the living room, where it watched over us with an almost lifelike presence. That night, as the house settled into silence and the glow of the fireplace dimmed, I couldn't shake the feeling that the doll's expression had changed. Its gaze seemed more intense, focused, almost as if it had moved from its initial position. Yet, dismissing it as a trick of the shadows, I drifted off to sleep, unaware of the mysteries that the night held in store. Little did we know that charming doll harbored secrets that would soon unravel our tranquil lives and lead us down a path intertwined with ancient magic and unforeseen peril. As twilight descended upon our home, casting long shadows across the living room, an unsettling presence began to make itself known. It started with subtle noises, a faint tapping, as if someone lightly rapped on the walls, followed by soft rustlings that echoed through the empty room. At first, we attributed these sounds to the settling of the house, or perhaps the neighborhood wildlife finding its way into our attic. Did you hear that? Mum whispered her brow furrowing as she glanced toward the direction of the sounds. Dad, ever the skeptic, shrugged. Probably just the wind knocking something around. This old place makes all sorts of noises. But as the evenings passed, the noises grew more distinct, more purposeful. Objects would be found out of place, a book shifted from the shelf, a chair inexplicably moved from its usual spot. Each time we would exchange puzzled glances, searching for a rational explanation. It's getting weirder, I admitted one evening as we gathered around the dinner table. I found one of my toys in the hallway this morning, and I know I didn't leave it there. Mom exchanged a concerned look with Dad. I thought I heard footsteps in the living room last night, but when I went to check there was nothing. Dad frowned, his usual jovial demeanor replaced by a hint of unease. Maybe we should keep an eye on things. Could be some neighborhood kids messing around. But deep down, we all knew it wasn't that simple. There was an air of unpredictability in our home now, a sense that something beyond our understanding was at play. As we debated over dinner, the presence of the doll in the corner of the room seemed to loom larger, its painted smile now more enigmatic than ever. Little did we realize, these strange occurrences were only the beginning, a prelude to events that would challenge our perceptions of reality and plunge us into a world where ancient magic and modern life collided with unforeseen consequences. The kitchen, usually a place of warmth and comfort during our family dinners, now became tinged with a growing sense of unease as the peculiarities persisted. It was another quiet evening when we first noticed it. A faint aroma wafting through the air, reminiscent of flowers in bloom despite the chill of autumn. Mum paused mid-sentence, her fork hovering over her plate as she sniffed the air. Do you smell that? she asked, her voice tinged with concern. Dad glanced up from his meal, his brow furrowing. Yeah, it's like lavender or something, but where's it coming from? I shook my head, equally puzzled. I haven't seen any flowers in the house, and it's definitely not coming from outside. The scent lingered, weaving through the kitchen like a phantom, adding to the growing list of inexplicable occurrences that had unsettled our once peaceful home. It seemed to come and go unpredictably, leaving us questioning our senses and our sanity. As days turned into weeks, our apprehension deepened. The tapping and rustling sounds persisted, accompanied now and then by whispers we couldn't quite make out. Objects continued to move without explanation, and the faint aromas became more varied. A hint of spices one evening, a whiff of incense the next. It's like the house has a mind of its own, Mum murmured one night, 
her voice low with anxiety as we gathered in the living room, trying to make sense of the inexplicable events. Dad nodded grimly, his eyes flickering toward the corner where the doll stood sentinel. We need to figure out what's going on. This can't go on like this. That's when we decided it was time to take action. With a mixture of trepidation and determination, we set up a hidden camera in the living room, hoping to capture evidence of whatever unseen force was at play. Little did we know, this decision would soon thrust us into a confrontation with forces far beyond our understanding, revealing truths that would shatter our perception of reality and lead us down a path fraught with peril and mystery. The night was still, illuminated only by the soft glow of the moon filtering through the curtains into our living room. We gathered around the small monitor, displaying the footage from the hidden camera, unaware of the chilling revelation it would unveil. As we watched in silence, the seconds ticked by. At first, there was nothing out of the ordinary, just the familiar sight of our living room bathed in darkness. Then a subtle movement caught our attention, a slight shift on the shelf where the doll stood. Wait, did you see that? I whispered, leaning closer to the screen. Sure enough, the doll began to move, its small figure gliding effortlessly from the shelf to the nearby table. There were no visible strings, no hands guiding its path, just an eerie autonomous motion that defied all logic. Mum gasped, her hand flying to her mouth in disbelief. Oh my God! Dad stared at the screen, his expression a mix of shock and horror. That's... that's not possible. But the camera didn't lie. Frame by frame, it captured the doll's eerie journey across the room, confirming our worst fears. It was as if some unseen force, some malevolent presence, inhabited the doll, manipulating it with an intent of its own. As the realization sank in, a heavy silence descended upon us. The once charming gift from Uncle Leo had revealed its true nature, a conduit for something beyond our understanding, something that defied the laws of nature and reason. We have to get rid of it, I finally managed to say, my voice trembling with a mixture of fear and determination. Mum nodded, her eyes still fixed on the screen. Yes, we can't keep this in our house. It's... it's dangerous. Dad glanced at us, his jaw set in a grim line. Let's figure out how. We need to find a way to break whatever hold this thing has over us. With newfound resolve, we began researching, delving into old books and seeking advice from those who knew more about such matters than we did. Little did we know, our journey to rid ourselves of the doll would lead us deeper into a world of ancient secrets and dark magic, where every step forward brought us closer to uncovering the truth behind the haunting presence in our home. The morning sun streamed through the windows, casting a warm glow over our determined faces as we gathered around the kitchen table, ready to delve deeper into the mystery that had taken hold of our lives. We need to find out everything we can about this doll, Dad declared, his voice firm with resolve. Mum nodded in agreement, her fingers tracing the edges of an old journal we had unearthed the night before. I've been looking into its history online. It seems this isn't the first time it's caused strange things to happen. I leaned forward, eager to hear more. What did you find? Mom flipped open the journal, revealing faded pages filled with accounts of previous owners, each one detailing inexplicable events that had occurred while the doll was in their possession. There were tales of unexplained noises, objects moving on their own, and even sightings of shadowy figures lurking in the corners of rooms. It's like a pattern, Mum murmured, her voice tinged with unease. Everyone who owned this doll seems to have experienced something supernatural. Dad rubbed his temples, deep in thought. We can't just ignore this. We need to talk to someone who knows about these things, maybe a historian or even a paranormal expert. And so our quest for answers took us beyond the confines of our home. We consulted with experts in folklore and paranormal phenomena piecing together a history that spanned decades, a history woven with threads of mystery and unexplained occurrences linked to the enigmatic doll. It's possible, one expert mused, studying the journal entries we had collected, that the doll is a vessel for residual energy, perhaps from a ritual or a spell gone awry. But armed with newfound knowledge, we delved deeper, scouring archives and gathering artifacts associated with magic in hopes of finding a solution to rid ourselves of the doll's haunting presence once and for all. Little did we know, our journey into the realm of ancient mysteries and supernatural forces would lead us to confront not only the secrets of the doll, 
but also the depths of our own courage as we faced the unknown that lurked within our midst. The night settled around us like a heavy shroud as we retreated to the safety of my parents' bedroom, seeking refuge from the escalating turmoil that had invaded our home. It started subtly at first, a creak here, a faint whisper there, barely perceptible disturbances that seemed to emanate from the very walls of our house. But as we huddled together in the dimly lit room, the atmosphere grew thick with an oppressive tension, as if the air itself was charged with unseen forces. I can't take this anymore, Mum murmured, her voice trembling slightly as she glanced nervously toward the door. It's like, it's like something's watching us. Dad paced the room, his brow furrowed in deep concern. We have to do something, this can't go on. As if on cue, a sudden gust of wind swept through the room, extinguishing the candles we had lit for comfort and plunging us into darkness. Shadows danced on the walls, elongating and contorting in eerie shapes that seemed to mock our fear. Then the sounds began, a low, guttural murmur that seemed to resonate from the very corners of the room. Objects trembled on shelves, pictures tilted askew on the walls, and a cold chill settled over us like an unwelcome guest. We need help, I whispered, my voice barely audible above the unsettling cacophony. We need someone who understands magic. With a shared glance of determination, we made a decision. We would seek out an expert, a practitioner skilled in the ancient arts, someone who could cleanse our home of the malevolent presence that had taken root. The following day, we reached out to a renowned specialist in spiritual cleansing and protection. His assurances gave us a sliver of hope amidst the growing darkness that threatened to engulf us. Little did we know, our decision to invite him into our home would mark the beginning of a desperate battle to reclaim our sanctuary from the relentless grip of the supernatural. The evening settled over our living room, bathed in the soft glow of candles arranged in a protective circle. In the center of it all stood the expert we had sought out, a figure cloaked in mystery and authority, his presence both reassuring and unsettling. I can sense the presence within the doll, the expert murmured, his voice low and resonant with knowledge born of years of practice. It is indeed a spirit, tethered to this place by unknown forces. Mum clutched my hand tightly, her eyes fixed on the doll, now placed ceremoniously on a small altar adorned with symbols of protection. Can you... Can you help us? The expert nodded solemnly, his gaze unwavering as he began to chant ancient incantations, his hands moving in precise gestures that seemed to beckon forth unseen energies. The air grew thick with anticipation, each word of power he uttered reverberating through the room. As the ritual intensified, so did our mixed emotions, relief at finally confronting the source of our torment, yet a gnawing fear of the unknown that lay ahead. Shadows flickered on the walls, seeming to dance in response to the rising energy, while the doll remained ominously still, its painted eyes watching us with an unsettling intensity. But then, just as hope began to stir within us, a chill swept through the room, a palpable resistance that halted the expert's movements mid-chant. The candles flickered erratically, casting wild shadows that seemed to mock our efforts. What's happening? Dad's voice cracked with urgency, his eyes darting between the expert and the doll. The expert's brow furrowed in concentration, beads of sweat forming on his forehead as he struggled to maintain control over the ritual. The spirit, it's fighting back. It knows we're trying to expel it. With renewed determination, he pressed on, pouring every ounce of his skill and will into the ritual. But the doll, infused with centuries of mysterious energy, resisted fiercely, a testament to the depth of its connection to the supernatural realm. Time seemed to stretch as we stood on the precipice of uncertainty, caught between the realms of belief and skepticism. Would our efforts be enough to banish the spirit, or had we unwittingly awakened forces beyond our understanding? As the ritual reached its crescendo, a deafening silence fell over the room. The candles burned brightly for a fleeting moment before extinguishing simultaneously, plunging us into darkness once more. And in that moment of eerie stillness, we awaited the outcome of our desperate battle against the ancient entity that had ensnared us in its spectral grasp. The dim light filtered through small basement windows, casting long shadows across shelves stacked with forgotten relics and dusty tomes. It was here, 
in the quiet solitude of our basement that we stumbled upon revelations that would forever alter our understanding of the doll and the forces that bound it to our home. Look at this, I whispered, running my fingers over a leather-bound grimoire adorned with intricate sigils. These books, they must hold the key to what's happening. Mum and Dad joined me, their expressions a mix of awe and trepidation as they examined the artifacts spread out before us. Symbols of protection, incantations for banishing malevolent spirits, and diagrams depicting celestial alignments adorned the pages, each offering a tantalizing glimpse into a world where magic and reality converged. This changes everything, Dad murmured, his voice tinged with determination. The doll isn't just a vessel, it's part of a larger, intricate magical network. Mom nodded in agreement, her eyes scanning the shelves for more clues. If we can harness the power of these artifacts, we might finally be able to complete the ritual and free ourselves from this curse. With renewed purpose, we set about deciphering the ancient texts, piecing together fragments of rituals and spells that promised a path toward resolution. Every incantation uttered, every symbol traced, brought us closer to understanding the true nature of the doll and the spiritual entanglement that ensnared us. But as we delved deeper into the mysteries of the basement, we couldn't shake the sense of urgency that hung heavy in the air. Time was slipping away, and with each passing moment, the malevolent presence within the doll grew stronger, its influence casting a shadow over our every move. Armed with newfound knowledge and artifacts pulsing with latent power, we resolved to confront the looming spectre that had plagued us for so long. Little did we know, our journey into the depths of magic and mystery would lead us to confront not only the supernatural forces that threatened our home, but also the resilience of our family bond in the face of adversity. The midnight hour found us deep within the heart of a dense forest, our makeshift altar illuminated by the soft glow of moonlight filtering through the canopy above. It was here, in this sacred space resonant with echoes of ancient rituals, that we prepared to enact the final, desperate gambit to sever the spectral ties that bound us to the malevolent doll. As we stood in a circle, hands clasped tightly, the air seemed charged with an otherworldly energy, an amalgamation of hope and trepidation that hung palpably around us. The artifacts we had gathered from our basement explorations lay before us, each imbued with a latent power that whispered promises of salvation and liberation. This is it, Dad murmured, his voice a steady anchor amidst the swirling currents of uncertainty. We've come too far to turn back now. Mum nodded solemnly, her eyes fixed on the doll placed at the center of our makeshift altar. Let's do this together. With a collective breath, we began the ritual. A harmonious blend of incantations gleaned from ancient texts, gestures traced with precision, and symbols woven into the fabric of our intent. The forest around us seemed to hold its breath, as if bearing witness to the convergence of mundane reality and ethereal realms. As we chanted, the boundary between the seen and the unseen blurred, our spirits intertwining with the energies we sought to harness. The doll, once a vessel of fear and uncertainty, now stood as a focal point a conduit through which our collective will and determination flowed. And then, in a crescendo of light and sound, the ritual reached its zenith, a culmination of our efforts, a testament to our resilience and unity in the face of adversity. The forest seemed to exhale, a gentle breeze rustling through the leaves as if in approval, carrying with it a sense of peace and closure. But only time would tell if our actions had been enough to break free from the lingering shadows of the past and to reclaim our lives from the grip of ancient forces that defied comprehension. Silent tears glistened in Mum's eyes as she gently cradled the now lifeless doll in her hands, its once menacing presence reduced to a mere artifact of our shared ordeal. Dad stood beside her, a hand resting on her shoulder in a gesture of quiet support, his own expression a mixture of relief and lingering sorrow. It's finally over. Mum whispered, her voice barely audible against the backdrop of the morning's serenity. We did it. I nodded, unable to suppress the swell of emotions threatening to overflow within me. The journey had been arduous, fraught with uncertainty and fear, but in that moment we stood united, a family bound not only by blood but by the bonds forged in the crucible of adversity. With solemn resolve we gathered the remnants of our journey, 
the ancient artifacts, the weathered grimoires, and the now inert doll, and prepared to consign them to the flames. It was a ritual of closure, a symbolic gesture to ensure that no trace of the darkness that had threatened to consume us would linger in our lives. As the flames consumed the last vestiges of our ordeal, a weight lifted from our hearts, a burden shared and now laid to rest. In the flickering light of the fire, we found solace and strength, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of the unknown. And as the sun climbed higher in the sky, casting its warm embrace over our home, we knew that we had emerged from the crucible of our ordeal, forever changed. United in our triumph over adversity, we embraced the promise of a future where the echoes of the past would serve only as reminders of the strength found in unity, courage, and unwavering love.